trying to get out of bed and sleeping all all day, all night, and uh, reduced sexual desire is often common with depression. So that can accompany it, difficulty concentrating. Um, obviously, the sleep doesn't help, so I think it's one of those things impaired memory. So if you're not sleeping, you're obviously going to have difficulties in these areas. Um, difficulty making decisions. Um, so ordinary things that you might do in your life, like even what to eat and eat for dinner or make for dinner might become uh, decisions that you're just having a struggle making. Uh, it can sometimes even be simple decisions that you're just not able to make. Um, marked tendency to focus on the negative. Uh, talk about that some more. So a tendency to to really focus on on all the bad things that are happening, and uh, thoughts of death or being better off dead um, or about hurting oneself. So that's a symptom of depression as well. So it's very common to have thoughts. Sometimes even people are are more um, moderately depressed or severely depressed are are actually planning a suicide and. This becomes a significant concern in, um, in in person, or if you have a friend or family member who might be struggling with depression. What causes depression? Um, major life events. Then, um, so the you know obviously so some people can manage these things, some people can't, but the, it could. Be anything from you know anything from losing a job, uh, a divorce, um, uh, even loss. People can become depressed. Um, recurrent inner stressful events, hassles. So uh, you know constant about money and stress about managing the finances and a huge debt. Can, people can lead people to feeling depressed. Um, few rewards. So again, um, maybe not many activities in life that are rewarding for all the work ones doing, societal factors, uh, poverty, discrimination. There's a higher incidence of depression. And um, isolation is a big issue. If um, there's a lot of support, social support, there is an increased risk for depression. Um, the negative thinking is is a big one, um, and it's a tendency, you know, either glass half full or glass half empty. So if you tend to be a person where the glass is half empty, you probably are more more prone to be becoming depressed. Um, the ages it says it's more common in these ages of 25 to 44, but really um, there is no uh, particular age, people can be depressed as, as as children, teenagers. We know that a lot of teenagers are struggling with depression all the way up to uh, seniors who, who I think depression can be quite prevalent. Uh, women are, t are tending to be a little more susceptible to major depressive or disorders than males, um, which is likely as increased incidence among the separated and divorced. Actors, um, family has a history of depression. That's uh, so always relevant if there's a family history, there's an increased risk. Uh, physical ailments, um, so many physical problems place a person at increased risk. So again, you know, any type type of physical illness, whether it is chronic pain, some kind of chronic illness somebody might be dealing with um, and struggling with, that's obviously going to increase their risk factor for depression. And uh, so again, drug-related factors, so um, it can be depression can be concurrent with uh, drug abuse, alcohol, substance use, um, some prescription medications can put people at increased risk, and I'm not sure what those are. 
it's always, I guess, good when you're on medications to be aware of what you're taking and and knowing whether depression can be is is a risk factor or protective of the medication. Depressions appear to develop as a result of a complex interaction between a variety of risk factors psychological, social, biological, and lifestyle based. So it's usually the um, combining of all of these risk factors, uh, not typically one small thing, but usually there's a variety of different things that can contribute to somebody becoming depressed. So what we suspect someone is depressed. The thing is talking to a friend or family member, um, really changes in your concern is, is not being afraid of saying, hi, I, you know, how are you doing? Do you want to talk about what's happening? Um, really trying to connect with this person. You you find that um, all of a sudden somebody is withdrawing and it's, it's atypical of them. Maybe they're typically a little more social and, and it's maybe you know, knowing that, that that's a sign of depression and, and being able to, to make that contact with them um, and uh, you help help them problem solve and help them find solutions. And, and if, if you are really concerned, getting help for them would, would be helpful. So really encouraging them to help. Write about it so people can um, uh, write down their feelings, can do some problem solving. Um, that can be a useful tool for people in managing depression. Um, again, if there's some real life issues like finances, uh, um, no time for self, you know, sometimes writing is a great tool to help um, brainstorm and problem solve. A great place to go for support as well. They often can help connect you with a therapist. Um, people might benefit from medication and they can get a prescription from their physician. Uh, so here it says research suggests that a combination of therapy and antidepressant medication is the best treatment for severe depression. So again, that's that's when when people really are not functioning in their lives and it, and it's come to a point where um, they need something um, patient to really help give them some energy and motivation to to sort things out and work on their care. There's a question here. Have you ever heard that it might be a solution for people to talk to health coaches? Um, we can definitely get into that here in just a bit. We'll talk about resources here, but absolutely. Um, I think a health coach or a life coach is, is a great option for many people. Um, being proactive if, if somebody feels like there's an area of their life that they're really struggling with, whether it's a relationship area, a job area. Um, coaches are often a fantastic resource for individuals. Help books. There are a ton of books out there that can be helpful for people who are struggling. Um, you know, I often recommend you can go on um, Amazon or Indigo Chapters. You can see the reviews, um, get a recommendation from somebody, um, and it is finding the right book for you. Um, a lot of the books that you'll find on self-help are for depression, particularly are on cognitive behavioral therapy books, mindfulness uh, books can be helpful. Um, sometimes people are looking for maybe something a little more, looking for meaning, um, look for a spiritual connection in, in their lives. So sometimes those can be helpful. People who are struggling, um, the internet, of course, is can be used as a guide as well. So there really are a lot of resources out there. Um, and I always encourage people to look into that. Managing depression. So there are a number of skills that can be developed. 
a big one is learning to recognize your thinking and how to shift your thinking. Um, so that is, is a big component of the cognitive behavioral therapy, particularly what's called cognitive restructuring. So as, as we talked about or I talked about is um, people often um, think negative thinking patterns and um, distorted thoughts um, that aren't helpful to them. And so when, when they learn, they learn skills to start to challenge that thinking and what I call learning realistic thinking can be a big component to getting well. Learning how to problem solve more effectively. So maybe there's some, some skill that can be acquired in learning, okay, I've, I've got this problem, what are the steps I need to take in learning to solve my problem? I did behaviors that need to change, um, so that can be a big one. So again, when people become depressed, they are, maybe they're um, not exercise and, and just staying in all day and, and just remaining depressed. So, out, getting exercise, eating healthy, connecting, showering, all these things are, are things that can help energize people and help them manage the depression and, and, and find move towards wellness. So practical steps for preventing or limiting depression, active and involved. So again, uh, that's a big one is, um, and it's it just stay connected. So these two are basically the same is, is really, it takes a lot of effort and work and you're not, you're not interested in connecting or doing those things you do. It is really important to, to stay connected. Um, the more isolated one becomes the more um, the more one becomes depressed and 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 not know that they're struggling so it, it, it can even be reaching out to your network and saying you know I'm not doing okay right now um, which takes a lot of courage but it is really helpful I, I find most people are very supportive if they know somebody is struggling they know that okay maybe they, they might make that extra effort in contacting them and connecting and, and and being that support that somebody needs. Um, and again, same thing with activities. It's, it's you know, finding that balance between, okay, maybe I do need a night where I just need to have time on my own, but not not doing it to the point of, of completely stepping out of your social life. Increase rewarding activities. So a lot of people let some household things slide. Maybe they're not cleaning the house like they used to, and and doing some of the things they need to and taking care of the home. Well, those things are important, get done, but those things are, don't necessarily help with improving your mood, whereas maybe it's a time of, of finding things that, that you that you will look forward to, that you might enjoy. Um, maybe it's a time to explore creative activities or interests that you've you've always been interested in but have never done. That That might help energize you and uh, help, help you uh, feeling good about yourself and, and your life again. Um, learn to ta attention to your thoughts and how they affect your mood again. That's what we talked about with the um, cognitive restructuring. So really learning to pay attention to these thoughts and challenging them. And that takes a lot of effort. People need, it's often recommended that they use a journal to write it down and have to, to really be, um, vigilant in 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 making time and space for that as, as they move forward. Uh, maintaining a healthy lifestyle, exercise is extremely important um, to get those natural endorphins going. It is shown to be just as helpful as medication, and actually the long-term benefits show that exercise actually helps people manage depression in the long term. So. Um, that is that's a really important piece to wellness. All that one 
person can sustain and that contributes to mood. We, you know, more and more we know that a healthy diet contributes to a healthy mood. Um, so being aware of that um, is is helpful. So um, there, again, lots of research out there. Somebody is struggling with that. that support there for people who might need help in in moving towards a healthier diet. About the physical activity, studies show that exercise has an effect um, on the brain chemistry that can help to reduce symptoms of depression. And even moderate to mild exercise is more effective than sporadic intense exercise. And the other thing I'd like to add about that is, is I think you can combine your needs for physical activity with meeting out in the outdoors, which can be really helpful for people who want to feel connected, um, uh, who feel more connected and energized when they're outside. And you also might want to combine that with social activity. So finding a friend or two, maybe have a regular meetup Saturday mornings where you meet up and you, you get out and you can do something or Wednesday nights. Um, you can combine these activities um, with a social activity. Activity, which maybe helps you stick to it as well. Uh, so maybe find a new activity to do. So taking up a new sport. Lot, there's lots of courses out there. Um, you know, again, maybe do that with a friend. And finding something that that finds something new and exciting with, with using your body, moving your body in a healthy way. really important as well. So I think we talked about the insomnia as, as being a big issue as, as contributing to depressed mood. So it is, it is one of the first things I think people, you know, need to focus on, not worrying about it, but just making sure like some of the basics are covered. So do you have um, good sleep hygiene um, or are there things you need to um, are you so exhausted that you're you're spending a lot of time sleeping during the day, so then it's interrupting your sleep at night? Um, often keeping to the same cycle, the same time going to bed, the same time getting up in the morning are, are things that can help with the sleep. And often support that consulting with your doctor. Uh, sometimes in the short term, medications can be helpful if it's become a big issue. Um, and again, it's looking at okay, what what do I need to do in in addressing this issue? Half fats can be connected to this sleep as well. So we, it's always a good place to start. Is where you're, if you're feeling tired during the day and lack of energy. It's going to be uh, know that, that you're probably going to reach for caffeine. But then we get this into this kind of compounding cycle where where the more caffeine we're drinking, then the more it's going to interrupt our sleep and uh, and and the more tired we're going to be during the day. So so it is one to be mindful of. Um, everybody metabolizes caffeine differently, so it's knowing your body and knowing, okay, can I have one or two cups and I'm okay? Or um, is one cup just as I can have? Otherwise, um, I notice that it impacts me and it may be impacting my body. Use is, is another thing to be aware of. Um, so I know alcohol is a depressant and will affect one's mood. Um, as well as um, using drugs to cope, street drugs, um, can all impact her mood. And so it is being aware of, well, is, you know, I'm smoking pot every night well is is what's happening with that how is it affecting my body and potentially affecting my mood so um if if somebody has sometimes there could be an underlying substance issue that's impacting their mood as well and maybe that's what needs to be addressed in in getting being the focus of treatment for a person lifestyle so again um, have fun um, really important to to try and find activities that you just might be interested even though um, you have low motivation and it doesn't seem like it's going to be fun uh, when people do mood logs 
Um, in fact, they will find that their mood does increase when they're doing these activities. Um, and, uh, and, and so it actually the, it does help, you know, so it, it's really important to be, even though we don't think they're helping, they, they are, uh, typically will help and, and often the first things we get up, but we really need to be um, diligent in maintaining some pleasurable activities in our lives. Um, Again, day things of life can be, you know, can just become redundant and um, take away our energy. And we really need to find things that are rejuvenating um, and restorative for us in in um, manner of health. Where to get help? Um, so again, we were looking at um, factor. Um, someone who's in the communities, there's the health centers, um, there are mental health services here. May Rivers Counseling is a great place. They have their weekly drop-in, um, a number of clinicians there. Um, a lot of people who work for the government have their EAP plans and have access to uh, therapy through that. Um, the EAP programs, as I mentioned, and um, uh, who's um, of uh, First Nations? They they have wellness workers and counselors through the uh, First Nations off here in in uh, Whitehorse. Sure, if that's that is the end of the slides, uh, which went pretty quickly. Okay, let's. I'll just take questions here. Is it possible? For a person to get depression who is active, works out regularly, has good and have network, um, what steps can be taken for the avoid it? So absolutely, um, even though you're doing all of the right things is possible for somebody to become depressed. I mean, we a common thing that we talk about is midlife crisis. Um, is common, so you know, kind of middle age. For we're not sure why, but people might start to become depressed. And also, what Chuck Cabot Zinn calls as the full catastrophe living. So having the house, the kids, the dog, and we're just going through the motions of life and become depressed. So um, absolutely, is um, anybody is is you know, even again, doing the right things and seeming to have a good life can become depressed. And I think, again, it's, first of all, acknowledging that, being aware that, hmm, I'm not feeling like myself, I'm feeling lower, just the normal things aren't making me happy. And and then it is, so again, it's it's looking at, okay, can I do this on my own? Can I do some reflection and explore, make get some time and space to explore this on my own? Or do we to look into getting some supports um, for whether it's supports through social support network or some professional help. Any other questions? Thank you, sir. There's another question here. What is the difference between depression and depressive disorder? Uh, that's that's a good question. Um, so I, I think there's the idea that anybody can experience, or everybody experiences. Let's let's just hear. Every everyone will experience times where they might have low mood, low energy. Um, you know, I think as we transition into winter and the darkness, and it, it can't, it's not uncommon for people to go through a day or two or maybe a week of maybe it's not quite feeling themselves. So that, that I would say, 
is a pretty typical thing. People may or may not notice that, but they, you know, we would kind of know that something's just not right. Uh, when it becomes a depressive disorder, I think that's when these the things that we talked about are starting to happen. Um, and then everybody can experience insomnia. That's, I, I mean, I think it's it's not typical to just speak to somebody, how are you doing today? Oh, not great. I had a terrible night's sleep or I couldn't get to sleep. But I think it, it's, it becomes the disorder when, when this is happening for uh, months at a time. So it, maybe it's been a month or two months and we're, we have insomnia almost every night. Um, the mood is um, is chronically negative. Um, there's the withdrawal starting to happen. The suicidal thoughts are increasing and, and maybe and, and becoming a, a real risk for someone. So that's a big thought. We're in, into the depressive disorder here. Um, with the disorder, you will often notice um, the psychomotor activity, the slowing down of thinking and, and processes, the difficulty in really making decisions that happen, um, and really distorted negative thinking. So, this, you know, all of a sudden these unrealistic beliefs that um, what's the point, nobody likes me, I have nothing to contribute, just some really distorts like what I would call all or nothing thinking where um, uh, magnifying the negative and minimizing the positive. Um, it's just some real concerns with thinking that, that just don't seem to make sense that somebody doesn't realize that that they actually believe that these thoughts are true, that those are the concerns that I would see when somebody has the disorder. Any questions here? I had another question, but I didn't see it here. It, it, the question is, if I have it right, it is how to solve depression that is caused by low self-confidence and low self-esteem. Um, so, again, this this is um, it's a good question, and, and I think, you know, it, it, it's kind of if somebody has low self-confidence and esteem, they're more likely to be depressed. Um, so I don't know if I have like a a direct answer of how to solve that. But again, it, it would be looking, maybe getting some support and looking at, okay, what are things I need to do to uh, want addressing my esteem um, and build confidence. So again, it could be looking at, okay, um, do to do work with my thinking and, and challenging negative distortions. So have some more positive and realistic beliefs about myself do I need to set some goals for myself and do some things that are going to build my self-esteem? Um, you know, I need to work on my relationships um, with others, again, to feel more connected and better about myself and, and building my esteem. Do I need to work on my past history and, and do some work there um, in, in my past history of um, my parents were, were very critical and and, and having a hard time with that still. So maybe it's exploring that history and finding strategies to do some of that healing and moving forward. And people can see this or not um, when people pop up. So I'm just going to read it out here. I'm an advocate of health coaching, and this is a tremendous resource as they continue to work with you over a long term to make a lifestyle change. Health setting goals and 
implementing them in all areas of life. Absolutely. I, again, think health coaching or life coaching um, is can be really helpful for people in, in getting some support in, um, in uh, making some positive life changes that one can sustain. Absolutely. And sign out here. Any last questions? I'm going to thank everyone for their participation today. Um, there are also some great courses offered, I've noticed, from the um, Yukon government, um, that great courses that, that address some of these issues. Um, that's always a, a useful resource as well. Um, and uh, you can contact, again, any of these services if you do need any support um, or have any questions. So th thanks again. And... Um, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll call that a uh, uh, day here. Okay, thanks.